well before we even knew what DNA was, much less how it was structured or was replicated, or even before we could look in and, and see meiosis happening in cells, we had the general sense that offspring were the products of some traits that their parents had. That, you know, if I had a, a, a guy with blue eyes, let me say this is the blue eyed guy right here. And that if he were to uh, marry a, a brown-eyed girl, let's say this is the brown-eyed girl, maybe make it a little bit more like a girl, if he were to marry the brown-eyed girl there, that most of the time, or maybe in all cases where we're dealing with the brown-eyed girl, maybe their, their kids are brown-eyed. Let me do it so they have a little brown-eyed baby here. All right, and this is just something. I mean, there's obviously thousands of generations of human beings, and we've observed this. We've observed that kids look like their parents, that they inherit some traits, and that some traits seem to dominate other traits. And one example of that tends to be uh, a, a darker pigmentation in maybe the hair or the eyes. Even if the other uh, if the other parent has light pigmentation, the darker one seems to dominate. Or sometimes it actually ends up being a mix, and we've seen that all around us. Now this study of what gets passed on and how it gets passed on, it's much older than the study of DNA, which was really kind of discovered in the, uh, or became a big deal in the middle of the 20th century. This was studied a long time, and, and kind of the, the father of classical genetics and heredity is Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel, who's actually a monk, and he would uh, mess around with, with plants and uh, cross them and see which traits got passed and which traits didn't get passed, and try to get an understanding of, of how, how traits are passed from one generation to another. So when we do this, when we study these, this, you know, I'll call it classical, classical genetics, I'm going to make a bunch of simplifying assumptions, because we know that most of these don't hold uh, for most of our genes. But it'll give us a little bit of sense of how to predict what might happen in, 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 future, in future generations. So the first simplifying assumption I'll make is that, is that uh, some traits have kind of this all or nothing property. And we know that a lot of traits don't. That let's say that they're in the world, and this is a gross oversimplification. Let's say for eye color, eye color, let's say that there are two alleles. Now remember what an allele was. An allele is a specific version of a gene. So let's say that there's the, you could have blue eye color, or you could have brown eye color, or you could have brown eyed color. That we lived in a universe where someone could only have one of these two versions of the eye color gene. We know that eye color is far more complex than that. So this is just a simplification. And let me just make up another one. Let, let me say that, um, I don't know, maybe a uh, for 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 teeth for tooth size, tooth size. That's a trait you won't see in any uh, traditional biology textbook. And let's say that there's one trait for big teeth, big teeth, and that there's another allele for small teeth, small teeth. And I want to make very clear this distinction between a gene and an allele. Allele. So let, let's let's you know I, I talked about Gregor Mendel and he was doing this in the 1850s, well before we knew what DNA was or how uh, or what even chromosomes were and how DNA was passed on and etc. Et uh, but uh, let let's think a little bit about let's go into the into the into the microbiology of it to understand the difference. So I have a chromosome. Let's say on some chromosome. Let me pick a. Let me pick some chromosome here. This is, this, is a, this is some chromosome. Let's say I got that from my dad. And on this chromosome, there's some location here. We could call that the locus on this chromosome, that where the eye color gene is. That's the location of the eye color gene. Now, I have two chromosomes, one from my father and one from my mother. So let's say that this is the chromosome from my mother. And they, you know, we know that when they're normally in the cell, they aren't ni nice and neatly organized like this in a chromosome. But this is just to kind of show you the idea. And let's say these are homologous chromosomes. So they code for the same genes. So on this gene from my mother, on, on that same location or locus, there is also the eye color gene. Now, I might have the same the same version of the gene. And I'm saying that there's only two versions of this gene in the world. Now, if I have the same version of the gene, I'm going to make a little shorthand notation. I'm going to write big B, 
Actually, let me do it the other way. I'm going to write little b for blue, and I'm going to write big B for brown. This, if I, I there's a, a situation where this could be a a little b, and this could be a big b, and then I could write that my genotype, my genotype, I have the allele, I have one big b for my mom, and I have one small b for my dad. Each of these instances or or uh, ways that this gene is expressed is an allele. So this is. So these are two different alleles. Let me write that. Two different alleles, or versions of the same gene. And when I have two different versions like this, one version from my mom, one version from my dad, I'm called a heterozygote, or sometimes it's called a heterozygous genotype. Heterozygous. Zygous. Genotype. And the genotype is the exact versions of the alleles I have. If I had, let's say in, in, I had uh, the, the lowercase b, I had the, the, the blue eye gene from both parents. So let's say that I was lowercase b, lowercase b. Then I would have two identical alleles. Both of my parents gave me the same version of the gene. And in this case, I'm called, this, this genotype is homozygous. Z or this is a homozygous genotype, or I'm a homozygote for this trait. Homozygotes. Now you might say, Sal, this is fine. These are the traits that you have. This case, you know, I have a a, a brown from uh, maybe my mom, a, a, and a blue from my dad. In this case, I have a blue from both my mom and the dad. How do we know whether my eyes are going to be brown or blue? And the reality is, is it's very complex. It is, it's a whole mixture of things. But Mendel, he studied things that uh, that ex that that showed what we'll call dominance. 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 And this is the idea that one of these traits dominates the other. So a lot of people uh, originally thought that eye color, especially blue eyes, was a was always dominated by the other traits. So we'll assume that here, but that's a gross oversimplification. So let's say that brown eyes are dominant. Brown eyes, brown are dominant. And blue are recessive. Blue. I wanted to do that in blue. And blue eyes, blue eyes are recessive. If this is the case, and this is a, as I've said repeatedly, this is a gross oversimplification, but if that is the case, then if I were to inherit this genotype, because brown eyes are dominant, remember I said the big B, the big B here represents brown eyes. You won't, and the, the the lowercase b is recessive. All you're going to see, all you're going to see for the person with this genotype is brown eyes. So let me do this here. Let me write this here. So genotype, genotype, and then I'll write phenotype. And ph genotype is the actual versions of the gene you have, and then the phenotypes are what's expressed or what do you see. So phenotype. So if I get a brown eye gene from my dad, and I'll like do it, it's a big, I wanted to do it in brown. Let me do it in brown so you don't get confused. So if I have a brown eye gene from my dad and a blue eye gene from my mom, my color transitions aren't there. A blue eye gene from my mom, because the brown eye is recessive, the brown eyed allele is recessive, and I, I just said a brown-eyed gene, but what I should say is the brown-eyed version of the gene, which is the brown allele, or the blue-eyed version of the gene from my mom, which is the blue allele. Since the brown allele is dominant, I wrote that up here, what's going to be expressed are brown eyes. Brown eyes. Now, if I have, let's say I have, let's say if I had it the other way, let's say I got a blue-eyed from my dad, and I get a blue-eyed allele from my dad, and I get a brown-eyed allele from my mom. Same thing. The phenotype is going to be brown eyes. Now what if I get a brown-eyed allele from both my mom and my dad? Well, let me see. I keep changing the shade of brown, but they're all supposed to be the same. So let's say I get two dominant brown-eyed alleles from my mom and my dad. 
Then what are you going to see? Well, you could guess that. I'm still going to see brown eyes. Brown eyes. So there's only one last combination, because these are the only two types of alleles we might see in our population. Although for most genes, there's more than two types. For example, there's you know blood types. There's, uh, there's, multiple, there's four types of blood. But let's say that I get two blue from each of uh, one blue allele from each of my parents, one from my dad, one from my mom. Then all of a sudden, this is a recessive trait, but there's nothing to dominate it. So all of a sudden, the phenotype will be blue eyes. And I want to repeat again, this isn't necessarily uh, how the alleles for eye color work, but it's a nice simplification to, to maybe understand uh, how heredity works. And there are some traits that, do, that, that can be studied in this simple way. But what I wanted to do here is to show you that many different genotypes, so these are all different genotypes, they all coded for the same phenotype. So just by looking at someone's eye color, you didn't even you didn't know exactly whether they were homozygous dominant. This would be homozygous dominant, or were they, whether they were heterozygotes. This is heterozygous right here. These two right here are heterozygotes. Heterozygotes. These are also uh, sometimes called as hybrids. But the word hybrid is kind of overloaded. It's used a lot. But in this context, it means that you got uh, different versions of the allele for that, for that gene. So let's think a little bit about what's actually happening when, uh, when, when my mom and my dad reproduced. So my dad, well, let, let's, let's think of a couple of different scenarios. Let's say my dad was, let's say that they're both hybrids. My dad has has the brown eye dominant allele and he also has he also has the blue eyed recessive allele and let's say my mom has the same thing so brown eyed dominant and she also has the blue eyed recessive allele now let's think about if if these two people before you see what my eye color is if you said look i'm giving you what these two people's genotypes are and let me label them this is the well i mean let me, i could make let me make this the mom i think this is the standard convention and let's make this right here. This is the dad. This is the dad. What are the different genotypes that their children could have? So let's say they reproduce. What I'm going to I'm going to draw a little grid here. So let me draw a grid. All right. So we know from our study of meiosis that look, my mom my mom has this gene on let me let me draw the genes again. So there's a homologous pair, right? This is one gene right here, one chromosome right here. That's another chromosome right there. On this chromosome in the homologous pair, there might be the at that at the at the eye color locus, there's the brown eye gene, and at this one at the eye color locus, there's the blue eye gene. And similarly for my dad, when you look at that same uh, chromosome in his cells. Let me do them like this. So this is one chromosome there, and this is the other chromosome here. When you look at that locus on this chromosome, or that location, it has the brown-eyed allele for that gene. And on this one, it has the blue-eyed allele on this gene. And we learn from meiosis when the chromosomes, well, they replicate first. And so you have these you know, two chromatids on a chromosome. But they line up in meiosis 1 during the metaphase. And we don't know which way they line up. For example, my dad might give me this chromosome or might give me that chromosome, or my mom might give me that chromosome, or might give me that chromosome. So I could have any of these combinations. So for example, if I get this chromosome from my mom and this chromosome from my dad, what is the genotype going to be for eye color? Well, it's going to be capital B and capital B. What's If I get this, this chromosome from my mom and this chromosome from my dad, what's it going to be? Well, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the the big B from my dad, and then I'm going to get the lowercase b from my mom. So this is another possibility. Now this is this is another possibility here where I get the with the brown eyed allele from my mom, from my mom, and I get the blue eye allele from my dad. And then there is a possibility that I get this chromosome from my dad and this chromosome from my mom. So it's this situation. Now, what are the phenotypes going to be? Well, we've already seen that this one right here is going to th this one's going to be brown. 
That one's going to be brown. This one's going to be brown. But this one is going to be blue. I already showed you this. But if I were to tell you ahead of time that, look, I have two people. They're both hybrids, or they're both heterozygotes for eye color. And eye color is, has, express, has this recessive dominant situation. And they're both heterozygotes, where they have each have one brown allele and one blue allele. And they're going to have a child. What's the probability that the child has brown eyes? Brown, brown eyes. What's the probability? Well, each of these scenarios are equally likely, right? There's four equal scenarios. So let's put that in the denominator. Four equal scenarios. And how many of those scenarios end up with brown eyes? Well, it's one, two, three. So the probability is 3 fourths, or it's a 75% probability. 75% probability. Same logic. What's the probability that th these parents produce an offspring with blue eyes? Well, that's only one of the four equally likely possibilities. So blue eyes, blue eyes is, is only 25%. Now, what is the probability that they produce a heterozygote? So what is the probability that they produce a, a heterozygous offspring? Heterozygous. So now we're not looking at the phenotype anymore. We're looking at the genotype. So of these combinations, which are heterozygous, well, this one is, because it has a mix. It's a hybrid. It has a mix of the two alleles. And so is this one. So what's the probability? Well, there's four different combinations. All of those are equally likely. And two of them result in a heterozygote. So it's 2 fourths, or 1 half, or 50%. So using this Punnett square, and of course we had to make a lot of assumptions about the genes and um, whether one's dominant or one's a recessive, we can start to make predictions about the probabilities of, of different outcomes. And as we'll see in future videos, you can actually even go backwards. You can say, hey, given that this couple had five kids with brown eyes, what's the probability that uh, they're both uh, heterozygotes or something like that. So it's a really interesting area, even though it's, it, it, it is a bit of uh, oversimplification. But many traits, especially uh, some of the things that, that Gregor Mendel studied, can be studied in this way.